We all know that a day is 24 hours long. But in reality, Earth takes only 23 hours and 56 minutes to complete one full rotation on its axis. That means a full 360 degree rotation of Earth does not make a day. An extra 4 minutes of rotation is required to complete one day. This happens for a very specific reason, one that most people never think about. Before you wonder, this has nothing to do with leap years. People have several doubts when it comes to Earth's rotation about its axis. Some even question why we discuss Earth's axis at all when it is just an imaginary axis. Others wonder why we do not feel the effects of centrifugal force given that Earth is spinning at high speed. The truth is, centrifugal force does affect us. Another common doubt is, if the planet is constantly spinning, why does jumping straight up and landing back down not make us land in a different place? And does Earth's rotation affect the motion of airplanes flying in the sky? In this video, we will explore why Earth has to rotate slightly more than once to complete a day. We will also look at some of the surprising effects of Earth's rotation that influence our daily lives. Hi friends! Welcome to a new video on Science Simplified for All. Objects that spin usually have a physical axis. Take, for example, a cartwheel. The rod at its center is its axis of rotation. Similarly, the central rod in a bicycle wheel serves as its axis. However, not all spinning objects have a physical axis. Consider a football. It rotates, but there is no actual rod or axis passing through it. Instead, it has an imaginary axis. If a ball is spinning like this, then its imaginary axis will be oriented in this direction. And if it spins that way, then its imaginary axis will be oriented in that direction. A ball can never spin in two different directions at the same time. The concept of an imaginary axis helps us distinguish between different directions of rotation. The same idea applies to Earth's rotation. We use an imaginary axis to define its direction of spin. This axis runs through the north and south poles. Based on this axis, Earth rotates from west to east. This is why, from our perspective, the sun appears to move across the sky from east to west. It is not just the sun. Every day, the moon and stars also seem to travel from east to west across the sky. But in reality, this apparent motion is caused by Earth's rotation from west to east. Now, let us look at how fast Earth rotates. We know that a full circle is 360 degrees. When an object completes a full 360 degree spin, we say it has completed one full rotation. Based on this, Earth takes 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds to complete one full rotation on its axis. This is called a sidereal day. If a day were determined only by Earth's rotation, then one full day should have been 23 hours and 56 minutes instead of 24 hours. But for thousands of years, humans have measured days based on the apparent movement of the sun in the sky. For example, if we ignore Earth's axial tilt for now, noon is defined as the moment when the sun is exactly overhead. When the sun returns to the exact same position in the sky the next day, we say a full day has passed. This time interval is what we call a solar day, which is exactly 24 hours. But here is the problem. Even if Earth completes exactly one 360-degree rotation, the Sun does not return to the same position in the sky. For that to happen, Earth must rotate slightly more, about one extra degree. This additional rotation takes four minutes. Now, the question is, why does Earth need to rotate more than 360 degrees for the Sun to appear in the same position in the sky? The reason is that Earth is not just spinning on its axis. It is also orbiting the Sun. Imagine that the Sun and Earth are in the positions shown in the picture. Right now, the Sun's rays are directly hitting this location on Earth. If a person is standing there, the Sun will be exactly overhead, meaning it is midday at that spot. Now, for a moment, imagine that Earth is not orbiting the Sun. In that case, if Earth completes one full rotation, 360 degrees, then the person standing at this spot will return to the same position relative to the Sun. That means the Sun will once again appear directly overhead. The time taken for this is 23 hours and 56 minutes. But in reality, 
Earth is not just spinning on its axis. It is also moving along its orbit around the Sun. By the time Earth completes one full 360-degree rotation in 23 hours and 56 minutes, it has also moved forward in its orbit by about one degree. Due to this, even though the person has returned with their head pointing in the same direction as before, their position is no longer aligned with the Sun's position. As a result, even though Earth has completed a full 360-degree rotation, the Sun will not yet be directly overhead. For that to happen, Earth must rotate one extra degree on its axis. This additional rotation takes four minutes. So, when we add these extra four minutes to the 23 hours and 56 minutes needed for a full 360-degree rotation, we get a total of 24 hours, which is what we define as one full day. In simple terms, for the Sun to return to the same position in the sky, Earth must rotate slightly more than one full turn. This extra rotation is required to compensate for the distance Earth moves along its orbit around the Sun. That is why a day is not defined by the time Earth takes to complete one full rotation on its axis. Instead, it is based on how long it takes for the Sun to return to the same position in the sky. Now let us see how Earth's rotation affects us. Because of this rotation, every point on Earth's surface has a certain speed. When an object spins, the regions closer to the axis rotate more slowly, while those farther away rotate faster. This means that locations near the equator have the highest speed. Due to Earth's rotation, places near the equator are moving from west to east at a speed of 1,670 km per hour. However, as we move closer to the poles, this speed gradually decreases. At the exact poles, the speed becomes zero. We know that rotating objects experience an outward force known as centrifugal force. On Earth, this force is strongest at the equator. Because of this, objects near the equator experience a slight reduction in weight. For example, if a person weighs 100 kilograms at the equator, this centrifugal force causes a small decrease in their apparent weight by about 0.3 kilograms or 300 grams. As we move toward the poles, this effect decreases. At the exact poles, there is no centrifugal force, so no such weight reduction occurs. Earlier, we mentioned that places near the equator are moving from west to east at 1,670 km per hour due to Earth's rotation. That is faster than a typical airplane. Yet, we do not feel this speed. Many people wonder why. When we travel in a car at high speed, we sense the motion in two ways. First, when we look out the window, we see objects outside moving rapidly in the opposite direction. Second, if the road is uneven, the car shakes and we feel the vibrations. These two effects help us perceive speed. Otherwise, speed itself is not something we can directly sense. For example, if you're inside a train with closed windows and it moves smoothly without any jerks, you will not feel the motion. The same happens when flying in an airplane. If there is no turbulence, you do not feel how fast you are traveling. In other words, we can sense speed only in two ways, either by comparing our motion to surrounding objects or by feeling the physical effects of acceleration, such as shaking or turbulence. Speed itself cannot be directly perceived. As Earth rotates, everything on its surface, including the air in the atmosphere, is moving along with it. That means everything around us, including the ground, buildings, and even the air we breathe, is moving at the same speed as we are. Since there is no relative motion between us and our surroundings, we do not feel Earth's rotation, even though we are moving at 1,670 km per hour. For the same reason, when we jump or hover above the ground for a moment, the Earth does not move away beneath us. Imagine using a drone to lift yourself slightly above the ground. While standing on Earth, you are already moving at the same speed as the planet's surface. Even after lifting off, you still retain that same speed. Additionally, the air around us is also moving along with Earth. Since we remain within this moving atmosphere, it keeps carrying us along with the planet. This means that no matter how long we stay suspended in the air, when we land, we will come back to the same place. Now, let us see how Earth's rotation affects airplanes flying through the sky. Actually, Earth's rotation does not directly affect airplanes in any way. 
since everything on Earth's surface, including the air in the atmosphere, is moving along with the planet. It is as if everything is stationary from our perspective. For example, imagine two airplanes flying near the equator at a low altitude. One is flying east at 1,000 km per hour, while the other is flying west at 1,000 km per hour. For people on the ground and inside the airplanes, there is no noticeable difference between moving east and moving west except for the direction. One airplane moves 1,000 km east in an hour, while the other moves 1,000 km west at the same time. Earth's rotation does not create any difference in the perception of speed for either. Even the power of the engine and the amount of fuel consumed will be the same. However, an observer in space would see things differently. From space, the ground at the equator is already moving at 1,670 km per hour towards east due to Earth's rotation. So, the eastward-moving airplane, which is flying at 1,000 km per hour relative to Earth's surface, will actually have a total speed of 2,670 km per hour, that is, the speed of Earth plus the speed of the plane. On the other hand, for a person in space, the westward-moving airplane will be moving at a speed of just 670 km per hour, that is, the speed of Earth minus the speed of the plane which is 1,670 km per hour minus 1,000 km per hour, resulting in 670 km per hour. From an external perspective, this airplane will not be moving westward. It will still be moving east, but at a slower speed than the ground. Since Earth's surface itself is moving at 1,670 km per hour to the east, and this plane is moving only at 670 km per hour to the east, for people on the ground, the plane will appear to move westward at 1,000 km per hour. This difference in speed can only be observed from space. For people on Earth and inside the airplanes, both planes simply appear to be flying at 1,000 km per hour unaffected by Earth's rotation. That is why we say Earth's rotation does not directly affect airplanes. However, Earth's rotation does indirectly affect airplanes. At high altitudes, strong winds called jet streams influence the flight of airplanes. These winds flow from west to east and can significantly impact a plane's speed and fuel efficiency. Eastward flying planes get a boost from the jet stream, allowing them to travel faster and consume less fuel. In contrast, westward flying planes face resistance from these winds, causing them to move slower and burn more fuel. Earth's rotation plays a major role in shaping these jet streams. So, while Earth's rotation does not directly affect airplanes, it does have an indirect impact by influencing atmospheric winds. However, jet streams are not present on all flight routes. Their effect on planes depends on location, altitude and season. Through this video, I hope you were able to understand some key aspects of Earth's rotation on its axis. If you like this video, make sure to like and share it. For more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and enable the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you.